me. You're with me on this. I love Top Gun. <laughs> Goose, no. So we, we may be shortly going into the danger zone with uh, Richard Winter's Maverick deck over here. That Maverick is, is has an E in there. And Richard but. Winter is up a game. <laughs> so Richard Winter, yeah, he is he is currently up one game. So let's see. What what might they have sighted in? Um, Take a look. Sure, so. Alex definitely brought in Wrath of God. Yeah, Alex has access to three Path to Exile, two Wrath of God, uh, and an Elspeth that seem like cyborg cards he may be interested in, as well as Umazawa's Jite. Yes. Uh, Richard Winter has he has a an Enlightened Tutor based cyborg, and Enlightened Tutor is an interesting card as a cyborg card because it gives you access to effectively more copies of hoser type cards and cards that are specifically very powerful in individual matchups, but it also shrinks your sideboard. So you basically have three copies of a bunch of these cards in theory, but if your opponent's able to able to deal with them, then you, you your deck is much less effective in that way. So we're off to the races here, and the races have begun with a Tundra for Alex Smith and a Noble Hierarch off of a Horizon Canopy for Richard Winter. Oh, I love Horizon Canopy. That's such, such, such a good card. I remember playing it back in a Time Spiral Block Constructed when they did PTQs back then. Yeah. Card. Canopy, it. canopy is very, very sweet because it uh, draws you a card. Yeah, it's it's basically a land that can cycle from play. <laughs> I played it in my mono white deck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that. Uh, I remember way back when, in, in years and years ago, when Flash Fires was a big card against mono white decks, that there would be mono white decks that would play like Brushland and Adarkar Wastes with no off color cards, just so they wouldn't get Flash Fire. <laughs> So Alex is brainstorming. I wonder what he's brainstorming about because he's holding his hand away from us. <laughs> so it looks like two unknown cards go back on top of his deck. I bet he knows what they are, though. Oh, so that was the main phase brainstorm. With uh, with no two drop from Alex, so he is he is without a Mystic. Richard Winter untaps. See. He has. A bunch of cards I can't really make out. I think one of them is a Tarmogoyf, another looks like a Plains and a Wasteland. Oh no, that's a Dryad Arbor. Okay. okay. And so Richard accelerates with Noble Hierarch and decelerates with Dryad <laughs> Arbor. First Stoneforge of his own. So unafraid of... It looks like Richard actually has a Plains in his hand. So I think that he is... a. Uh, Looking to play, does he have Elspeth or something in his deck? He, he, it looks like he may be looking to play a Forecasting Cut Spell next turn. He certainly has one Elspeth in his sideboard, which I, I would bring in here. He's also got Thrun, which is really Ooh, Thrun is good. Sweet. And he gets Sword of Light and Shadow. Ooh. Which Alex Smith takes a moment to read. All those swords are so, just so good. For those, of you, for those of you at home who might not know, Sword of Light and Shadow uh, is much like the Feast and Famine, which is much more commonly known these days, uh, it is one of those swords that gives plus two, plus two, and protection from two colors, these being black and white. Uh, the two triggers on Sword of Light and Shadow are gain three life and raise dead. So whenever you hit your opponent with Sword of Light and Shadow, you gain three life and get to return a creature in your graveyard to your hand. Right. So like Richard will be shipping from here. And Alex on taps. I think there was a Snapcaster in his hand. Plays a fetch. And, and passes, and passes it right back. Okay. We do know that Alex Smith cybered in several companies of Wrath of God, or at least we assume he did. So he could be just sitting back and hoping that Richard will, will overextend into those Wrath of Gods. Though he does know, he also knows that Richard has... Uh, just search for that sword, and sword is able to uh, let him get a lot of pressure on the board without committing too many creatures. Wrath of God would also be pretty sweet because it actually kills a, a land of Richard's as well. <laughs> so Richard sends in for two with the Dryad Arbor, courtesy of Noble Hierarchs Exalted. And I think I saw a Terror in Richard's hand, along with the Waste. Uh, well, there's that sword for sure. Oh, Alex just passes right back. And... The sword comes down, thanks to Stoneforge Mystic. Oh. Well, 
he is responding to. Oh, he's responding to activation. So does he have a uh, Vendillion click? The click trick on Stoneforge <laughs> Mystic is actually uh, quite an important one to keep in mind. Uh, often players will. Not that Richard had, had an opportunity in this case, but often players will wait until their opponent, the end of their opponent's turn, to use their their Stoneforge Mystic when there's very little need to, and uh, that often gives their opponent the opportunity to actually cast a Vanilla Click and take their only equipment out of their hand. So the click comes down for Alex, and Richard reveals Sword Terror Choke Plane Wasteland and something else. I don't know if Alex can afford to take that sword here. He may need to take that choke. Oh, it's a Knight of the Reliquary. Ah, my favorite. Ooh. <laughs> Again, Knight is another uh, really good card. Like, yeah, Knight is Knight is a very scary card in uh, in every format in which it's legal. It's particularly scary in Legacy because in Legacy it can search up Wasteland, and he we takes uh, the choke. He does take choke. So we are going to see. Well, I don't know what we're going to see this turn. So, all right. So, sword comes into play, and Richard uh, draws, draws a from yeah, draws from the click, and he draws Gattic ooh, Gattic Oh, that's that's a pretty good one. Really good for him. So, right there. Alex Smith, we know has Wrath of God in his deck at this point. He has four Jace the Mind Sculptor in his deck, and I believe I saw one in his hand. Yeah, there's one in his so hand. So that's that's definitely a card that Richard would be very happy to resolve. And if he can resolve it and equip it with that sword, it has protection from white, which keeps it from ever being uh, being defeated by swords to plowshares. He will not go farming. He's uh, too busy. <laughs> Richard thinks about his next action. He's got plenty of options. I assure you that was not an earthquake. I think somebody might have just hit the tent. <laughs> he started shaking a bit. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see that. I am, uh, as I live in California, actually rather used to earthquakes. <laughs> At least little ones. I remember when the earthquake happened uh, in the Virginia, D.C. area. Oh, yeah, that was funny. I was sitting in my car, and I started shaking. I have a small car, so it shakes a lot when I'm on, like, a bridge or something. And I was like, I'm not on a bridge. What's going on? And then I got to work, and they're like, oh, that was an earthquake. And I'm like, really? <laughs> oh, that's what that was. So, not, uh, not used to those. Gaddick Teague also notably locks out force of will. So yes. if Richard can get that, that Gaddick Teague equipped, uh, Alex, I don't know what he can do to kill it or Rash. stop all... Well, no. It's oh, Gaddick yeah, Teague. Yeah, Gaddick Teague. Oh, my goodness. That's right. <laughs> if he gets that equipped with sort of of, uh, of Light and Shadow, it could mean serious trouble for Alex Smith. And Alex does not look excited about that Gaddick Teague. He is casually chewing his gum. not Trying not to give anything away. Looks like Teague resolves. And is the equip on Teague? Are we seeing... And... No, equip Stone on Stoneforge. Forge. Okay. Stoneforge is going to get in, is the is the plan here. I don't know... I don't know if I would have cast Teague before ta before equipping and attacking with Stoneforge there. I might have tried to equip Stoneforge and tried to draw out Swords to Plowshares. Yeah. This is getting in... Yeah, this is, is, it, is this getting in two more damage than he otherwise would, gaining him three life. He's not getting the raised dead trigger because there's no creatures in his yard. So I, th I think I would have tried to equip the Gaddick Teague right there to, to not give Alex any chance to dig for Source to Plowshares. Right. See, so Alex has two Jace in his hand. Looks like a Mishra's Factory. Uh, that's a Wasteland and a Brainstorm, I think. I think he also had a Snapcaster Mage. So. The Wasteland takes out Wasteland. And Alex passes back. Richard casts Enlightened Tutor. Interesting. What what do we have to tutor for? We have more chokes. Yep. So I imagine that's the likely choice. He could also fetch uh, a, another sword, a Jit. Uh, any of which he could put into play directly with Stoneforge Mystic. Ooh. And there's a Jite. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Oh, I'm not. He... I'm not super excited about Jite. Jite not doesn't really represent that big of a threat that I'd be willing to tutor for it. And he goes oh, for it. No, nope. oh, he oh. changed his mind. Nope, there it is. <laughs> nope, maybe. Oh, 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 oh. 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 
All right. Well, <laughs> Jite is uh, is out of the deck. He hasn't he stopped shuffling? <laughs> Writing something down. I don't know. Okay. Well, he's continued shuffling. So I think that is his I final think, answer. I think he has made his decision. It's quite the colorful hat. That is like a hat hats. much more colorful than his deck, which is only green white. <laughs> Maybe he wore it to throw his opponents he off. He could. He's like, you think I'm playing five color because of my hat, but I'm tricking you. Right. So untapped and draws. I wonder what he drew. We'll find out. <laughs> See, yeah, I don't. I, I really don't like that tutor for for uh, for Jitte there. He's he has his his Stoneforge Mystic equipped. So, is he going to use it to put it directly into play and then not get to attack with the, the pro color here, the, the, the bigger Stoneforge here? I think that if he was going to do this, he definitely wanted to equip uh, Gaddick Teague last turn. I think so. All right, so he is up. Oh. And do this. No, 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 no. I think okay, he's maybe. trying to come up with his next plan <laughs> of action, so. And now he's moving. Oh, <laughs> 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 we've got some some yeah. indecision from Richard Winter. Uh, I mean, he, he does. I was just gonna say he has a lot of options. There are any number of things he can do here. He has he has multiple creatures in his hand. He can cast. He has a sword. He can move to several different creatures. Uh, the Jite that he just tutored for that he may or may not want to put into play this turn. So you thinking about playing a knight or a I could board? One thing I could see uh, Richard doing is, because he has the uh, the Sword of Light and Shadow, is he just saying go? So just he tapped, tapped two, two mana, mana and said go? Said go. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> he has two mana taps. Oh, uh, interesting. I guess, I guess he doesn't mana burn these days. But it's legacy, old rules, right? Yeah. Combat damage, etc. It's actually, uh, oh, it's no. actually the original magic rules. There are interrupts. There's a damage prevention window. Do you even oh, know oh. the original magic rules? <laughs> no. Most people don't. I don't really. <laughs> I, I actually forgot most of them. But yeah, there's it, it, actually way back in in the olden olden days of magic, there was there were effects. There was a damage prevention step. In which only damage prevention effects could be played. <laughs> only oh, and and you could only interrupts were cards you could only play if like something had been played. And there's the interrupt window, so that was that was different from you know normal responses to things. So you actually could could like cast cast Armageddon with Zuron Orb in play, and you could wait until your opponent has passed the interrupt window and then responded by sacking all of your lands to Zuron Orb, knowing that your opponent couldn't possibly counter it at that point. <laughs> there, there are all sorts of really bizarre things that, that, that happen with original magic. Well, I thank goodness for the rules we have today. Wizards has done a great job of streamlining things. <laughs> Though, even with the relatively simple rules, magic is still a very complicated game, as, as we can certainly see from uh, everything that's going on right here. So Alex does play a Snapcaster, and he Snapcasts a Brainstorm, I think? Yep. And he put two on top and is shuffling them away. So, uh, Mishra's Factory comes down. That is a creature that can get in the way of the Sorted Guy, although the blue creatures could as well. Right. And now we have Jitte in play. Right. Yeah. I, I Still don't understand why he just tapped two mana there, but I think he just he tapped I, two I and think forgot he, about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think he just sort of had a, a, a brief mental lapse. It, it happens to the best of us. And Richard, is he moving the sword over now? And oh no, no, he's that mystic is getting big. That mystic is doing some serious work. So I yeah I, I don't. I don't. I think. I think Richard should have tried to cast a creature here because if Alex counters, if if, if Richard casts Knight of the Reliquary and Alex counters it, if he hits him with his with his uh, Stoneforge Mystic, he just gets it right back. Yeah, he gets it back. <coughs> All right. So 
Alex is thinking, do I block? I think he does. Right, and Stoneforge goes to the bin. All right, and we get two counters on the Jite. And I think we're probably going to see that sword move over to Gadigtig. Maybe I'm just hoping that we see that. He might just opt for the Reliquary. Oh. And... No, he's equipping. Oh, what? Noble Hierarch. Okay. Okay. I'm still not sure I understand that decision. And there's Swords to Plowshares that he just drew. Oh, oh wow. Wow. So... Wow, so Alex Smith can now source the plowshares that Gaddictig, which could have just been equipped with that sword, and then he's going to be able to resolve Jace the Mind Sculptor. Ooh. And here comes another factory and the swords for the team. There he goes. So. And Jace is probably going to be following up that sword. Yep, Jace is going to come down and... Start taking over this game. And it will bounce that Hierarch, I'm I mean, sure. To be fair, Richard does have a... Oh, he's got another Jace he, in hand, so he can allow that one to... Well, he, he, does have, he does have Jace in hand, and if, he, if, he, if uh, Alex plays Jace and then bounces the Hierarch, there's still that, uh, that dry Dryad, Dryad Arbor. Arbor hiding over there in the corner. There's a... Uh, a little bit of communication going on between the players, probably about life totals. You can often uh, often have discrepancies with uh, the number of fetch lands and pain lands and fetches and swords and various and other ways you can you can harm lions yourself. And tigers and bears, oh my! <laughs> well, there aren't there aren't zoo decks here, so we don't really have many of those. But all right, so Jace does come down. And, yep, Bounces. returns Noble Hierarch. So, I think on Richard's turn, we may see Hierarch come back down and Dryad Arbor take out Jace. And gets back Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know Is that he'd equip... he equips he may... the, the Jitte? Well, I, I... No, he doesn't, he doesn't get any, uh... Any... Oh, if he attacks Jace, uh, that's yeah, right. He doesn't, he doesn't it's get, only common damage to a player. So... Richard could just play his his noble hierarch, which will make the giant arbor big enough to def to kill the Jace because it used one counter bouncing the hierarch in the first place. Right. But he chooses he chooses to jete it, and it will come in at Jace. We'll have to. He didn't play hierarch before combat, so he's going to have to remove a jit counter if he uh, if he wants to actually take out Jace. Uh, both, I believe, because it's plus two plus zero. Oh. Or plus two, plus two. Right, but Jace, is, Jace it only has two counters. Oh, that's right. I, and I and now the, a post a post combat hierarch. I'm Richard Winter is is making some uh, pretty significant tactical mistakes here. I think, but uh, I'm sure he's, he's pretty nervous. Yeah, uh, it, I I don't know what his experience is playing uh, playing under the lights here, but it's definitely yeah. the sort of thing that can that can shake some players' nerves. So another Jace comes down, and hierarch goes back up. Wasteland takes out Dryad Arbor. So oh, right. Richard Winter has gone from a, a pretty solid position to being totally back on his heels, now facing Jace. And he draws a green Sun Zenith, which could go and get him. Um, he doesn't have another Dryad Arbor. He does have, he has Scrib Ranger. Scrib Ranger is pro blue. So if he does, uh, he doesn't Zenith for two though. He's Zenith for one. If he had Zenith for two, he could have gotten Scrib Ranger, which is, a f which is a f both a flyer and pro blue. So it could go over the Mistress Factory and hit Jace. No, he gets a Noble Hierarch. I think he's he's probably trying to get some mana. Yeah, he he is pretty low on mana now that he, he's lost his Dryad Arbor. So he he plays out another Hierarch. So this does give him two Hierarchs, which. Can theoretically pressure Jace, but the problem is there is that there is that Mistress Factory in the way. So Richard's got 
Knight, Terravor, and I didn't see that third card. Yeah, we, we know that he has the, had the Knight and Terravor. Those have been in his hand for quite a while. Yes. He has, uh, he has not seized an opportunity to cast them. Knight, Terravor. And it looks like Swords to Plowshares? I believe that was an Ice Age Swords to Plowshares. I'm fairly certain of that. Alex Straws. There's a path and a misty rainforest. And he plays the misty and says go. And Richard top decks the green sun zenith. So he could go right. and get Scrib Ranger again. He has the opportunity once again. I think he's going to try and get a Hierarch past that factory. Uh, that, that looks like, is that another plow? That's, oh, a, that's path. a path. Okay. So he's going to tap it for mana and go get a mana. So uh, the time was just called in the main event. I'm not sure what our time status is in this. We're going we're gonna to check in to see what sort of extension these players have. Generally, players in the feature match area tend to have additional time because of the time that it takes to set up and get, get going on camera. So Richard Winter is currently up one game to zero. So if they, if they are uh, unable to finish this match before time expires, uh, this game rather, before time expires, Richard will be the winner of the match. Alex Smith basically fighting for the draw here. Draw is better than a loss at this point. Absolutely. So they have a, they currently have a four minute time extension. So Not enough for Alex to win the game. It could be tough. Mm. All right. So right. Jite now. Oh, Snapcaster. That Hierarch is going to be gone as well. And now this is Richard's opportunity to start getting work, or uh, rather Alex's opportunity to start getting to work on Richard's life total. So that Jitte takes out the Snapcaster. I believe there are two more counters in that Jitte, so it's actually going to be very difficult for, for Alex to uh, muster much of an offensive because if that factory attacks, it's going to be taken out by Jitte. Brainstorms and a spell snare, spell stutter sprite, and let's see, can't see that third card. I think it was a land. So Alex just passes back. He really needs to assemble something here to uh, to be able to get an offensive going before time expires. And there's a mother of runes. So, does that resolve? I believe so. And the knight comes down. That knight has waited long for this yes. opportunity. <laughs> Alex fetches. For an island. Alex really hasn't played in the, a lot of counter magic. No, he uh, he's basically just been fighting with uh, removal spells. I mean, I, I actually think after sideboarding, he he probably doesn't have much counter magic in his deck right. in this matchup. He probably removes uh, force of wills. Force of wills is not really the sort of card that you want against a deck no. that is uh, that you have the. Much, be much more efficient ways to fight most of its threats. Right. So I imagine his deck probably just has Spell Snare, maybe Counter Spell left in it. Yeah. He's also got the Spell Starter Sprites too, which right. can occasionally Those, counter things. They can counter Mother a Mother of Runes. <laughs> Not much else. Jinx! Alright, Alex bounces the Mother. To and half, half the takes night. the knight out, so he goes farming. 
Or rather, you no, know, Path isn't farming. Plows is farming. Path is, I don't know. He is now exiled. <laughs> Into exile you go. Which is kind of funny because the original card that did that was exile. It was an alliances card. It only hit attacking creatures. It cost <laughs> three mana. Come a long way since then. It was interesting that it's actually mostly creatures that have gotten better and spells that have gotten worse, but that's not one of them. So I think Alex Smith is looking to the clock to see how much time he actually has left, which the answer is not much. We had a four-minute ex uh, extension for this. Time was called, I'm going to guess... Probably a two guess or three, two minutes, or three ago. minutes ago. So there's probably only a, only a couple turns left. Oh, I, I believe we actually might be getting about two turns now. Uh, we are in turn one. Okay, so this is going to take a, a absolute miracle for Alex Smith yeah. to be able to win this game. Uh, oh, Ooh! There he is. A miracle called Spell Stutter Sprite. Now he just needs 15 more of those. <laughs> I'm surprised uh, Richard didn't activate the GTA. He could have, yeah, he could have used he could have used GTA to, to kill the Spell Stutter Sprite and prevent it from countering them. Could have sword stit there, or yeah, he had a couple ways to make that happen. But I, I guess he might have been okay with that. And then Knight. Knight cannot be stopped by such a such a paltry thing as a Spell Stutter Sprite. <laughs> Alex is going to brainstorm again, looking for that miracle. Uh, Snapcaster Jace, Spell Snare. He needs about eight more lands and an Emrakul. <laughs> and then he can win. Couple Cloud Posts, Emrakul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, only, only a few more lands if they are Cloud Posts. So. And when Jace dies, sacrifices his life to bounce that Knight of the Reliquary. comes back and another Jace this one just as ready to sculpt mines and he's gonna fate seal and puts it on bottom so Richard untaps so it should be turn three that we're on right now I believe so yes Draws stone forge Goes to Zenith for four. And there's Thrun. Thrun, Thrun is an excellent card uh, to deal with Jace here. Though Richard wasn't really in danger of losing. Alex is uh, certainly in a rough spot already. We have more tent shaking. <laughs> Maybe there's like a road race going on in the St. Louis Arch. <laughs> it's like a 3D NASCAR. The St. Louis Arch is amazing to look at. It is at. pretty cool. It is really cool. It is very arch-like. <laughs> I like architecture. It's fun. Alex goes to brainstorm on his last turn. There's a stone forge. A little too late. Don't think he found his miracle, so. Yeah. It is a stone forge. That that is as close as they come to miracles. Maybe he. Sort of feast and famine. He can sword up that sprite. Richard will most likely just kill it in response. He, he might. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like that would be the right call. Oh, Al no, Alex just passes the turn back. Right. So this should be the More shaking. Final turn. I believe so. If our count is correct. Yes. And if our game count is correct, I believe this means that Richard Winter will be the winner of this match. Could 
Oops, the sword. Oh. Oh, so we actually, uh, we just got information from, uh, from the table judge that they are in fact not interns. Oh. We had some misinformation that okay. that they uh, they are about to run out of time. So some of these plays make a lot more sense. Okay. Yeah. That I, okay. I can, I can see these things now. And he goes swords the spell stutter sprite. Almost puts it in the graveyard, but puts it in the exile zone. And Thrun Beats. gets in there. Gets in there at Jace. So, after the... Goes in to snap caster away. What's he to, snapping up here? To block the thrun. Save this Jace. So Snapcaster does block. I believe he used... Did he use the... He used the, uh, the, the Jitte, I believe, on the Mistress Workshop. Oh, uh, the Mistress... I think, or, so, or the Mistress Factory, excuse well, me. Well, then the Factory didn't die. Did he use the... Oh, he used, he used the Factory it. to pump itself and then play Snapcaster just to chump block? Right. Okay. So here comes the Stone Forge. So he, he gets a Jite of his own, which will remove Richard's Jite. All right, so they are in fact now out of time. Richard's next turn will be turn one. So the GTA oh where did that go? I'm a little confused. He just picked up a GTA. Oh, it's just it's just sitting on the side. Okay. Yeah. And is he going to play it? Where did the the GTA counters go from? Uh, oh, he killed. Okay, he. Yeah, he 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 used them to kill the other Stoneforge Mystic. In response. In response to the. the in response to. In response to his jitte, and then in, res and in response to him using the the other jitte counters, he flashes in the sort of feast and famine, and so the the jitte is it sort of disappeared from our view. <laughs> is the jitte in Alex Smith's hand? It's nowhere to be seen on the table. It must be. I, I don't think he's actually played his own jitte yet. Yeah, no, that jitte is remaining in play. He just used his jitte counters to kill the. I believe he killed to kill the Stone Forge in response to the search trigger, maybe? Uh, I don't know. Although Alex had still revealed his, his Jitte already, so I'm a little confused about exactly what happened. But uh Jace goes away. Yep, yeah, Richard pummels Jace with his thrun. Gets counters on his Jitte. Looks like a scavenging ooze that he just drew. That's an interesting card for legacy. Scavenging ooze is actually <laughs> I really I really like scavenging ooze. I, uh, I first played against Scavenging Ooze in a Knight of the Reliquary Mirror, and it ate all of my land, and my knights were so <laughs> sad. It makes Tarmogoyf sad, too. Yeah, it really does. And here comes Batterskull. Slowly taking back control of this game when it seemed like he had just given it away. Yeah, I mean, Richard Winter looked to be in a dominating position early, made what, uh, a few questionable decisions that let things slip away, but Alex Smith clawed back into the game, but Richard Winter looks to be taking control once again. All right, so Alex goes to draw. Should be turn two. And Wrath of God. Wrath of God. That will kill Thrun. There's not much in this world that does, but that is. That is one of them. Ooh. And he sadly picks up his creatures. Richard untaps. 
We are now in turns. I believe Richard is now on turn three. Should be turn three. So he draws life from the loam. So he is going to cast a knight, I am guessing. No, a Terravor. How big is that Terravor? Equip, and it gets plowed. So Terravor goes farming. How big was it? And we're going to find out. One, two, big. three, four. Four on Richard's side, and I think there's only one on so Alex's side. So it's either, either seven or eight. Oh, and now we have a spell starter sprite. And comes in to beat. But Richard is at 25. And that might not be enough. Yeah, I mean, I believe this is Alex's turn fourth four. turn. So she would be the second to last turn of the game. Yep. So... Hits him for five, down to 20. And I believe he discarded life from the loam. Batter skull comes down. Jitte kills Jitte, and I believe we're at, I believe we're on turn five, and that is the end of time. Though Richard seems to be staring intently at his hand, as if what he does this turn matters. He may play knight and equip it. Oh, and and all right. there's a handshake. Well, so I believe it, that means Richard Winter wins the match one game to zero. As, that is uh, correct. Game two does not finish. So wow. Legacy can be a, a format that takes a long time. Yes. <laughs> there's a lot of shuffling, a lot of a lot of intricate decisions that need to be made, and uh, I'm guessing their their game one is was uh, 